Today, we're here to talk about a public health crisis that preceded and has been exacerbated by the COVID-19 pandemic, something that we both care deeply about. I'm referring to adverse childhood experiences, ACEs, and the impact of childhood trauma on lifelong health and well-being. Ms. Winfrey, I am so grateful to you for joining me today and for taking the time to speak with us about your book, What Happened to You, well, and your ongoing efforts to raise awareness. So thank you. Well, you are the leader in this. You have been working like in the fields on the ground, trying to get people to understand what it is and what the impact of ACEs uh, has on all, all of our lives, anybody who has experienced, you know, one or two or even many. And one of the reasons I wanted to write the book with uh, Dr. Bruce Perry is because the, the realization of what happened to you literally colors your entire worldview. It shapes your entire worldview. And understanding what happened to you and also what happened to other people who are in your family, in your environment, in your work, work uh, space, um, changes the game. It just changes the way you operate. And that question has literally changed the way we operate our school so that we knew that, uh, I first knew what ACEs were when what an ACE test was because girls coming to my school in South Africa were taking the ACE test and on average were scoring a six because they were coming from really traumatic backgrounds at a time when AIDS was one out of four people and every week we had to tell another child you've lost a parent. So I was aware what it was. I, I wasn't really aware of the long-term impact which is what you have been doing for years. So congratulations on the fact that you have been so steadfast that now this becomes a conversation for the public that can actually be heard. Cause you've been saying the same thing. You've been <laughs> saying it and saying it and then you try another way to say it. And now we're gonna try this way to say it. And finally, I think it could be heard. Well, I will say, um, first of all, I loved the book so much. Dr. Perry is a, a friend and colleague. I will say, I know a lot about ACEs and childhood trauma, but I learned so much in really? reading this book. Oh, yes, yes, I, I, I enjoyed it so much. And the, one of the things that came to mind for me, uh, because yes, I have been shouting this from the rooftops for a long time, and I kind of relaxed a little bit because I was like, oh, if Oprah's talking about it, maybe <laughs> I can retire. Like, <laughs> no. I might no. go just work in my garden uh, for a little bit. No, no, no. <laughs> but, it, means, uh, it, means, it means we need to combine forces and even shout it even louder because I think it's life changing. One of the things that makes me so happy that. Um, you know, I did this book and I wanted to do it because I'd had a conversation with Dr. Perry uh, on 60 Minutes uh, talking about this very question of what happened to you when we were talking about uh, an institution called St. A's in Milwaukee that uses uh, trauma-informed care for all of their, their, their children and clients. And when he said it to me on the air, like the, the, the question that people should be asking when they're dealing with kids who are misbehaving and particularly you know, young black boys in the classroom who are suspended and are then labeled and then are put in the you know, bad boy school. The question should not be what's wrong with this boy, what's wrong with this child, but what happened to this child? Like a light went off for me. And you know, I'd been talking about it for years on the Oprah show. And suddenly, just like I, we were talking about you, you tried this way in and then you tried this approach. Suddenly that what happened to you uh, question hit me in a way that all the other conversations had not. And I was like, oh, that is what the issue is. That and is it, 
It's a systemic issue. It's a systemic issue. Even for those of us who have been asking the question, what happened to you? Well, we're, we've been doing it so much at the individual level. All of society looks at the individual and says, you've got to pull yourself up by your bootstraps. And it's right. the, the, the individual, the individual family, the individual uh, healthcare provider trying to treat families. And one of the things that I realized is that this is a public health crisis. And that means that we have to take a public health approach. And one of the pieces that is so fundamental to a public health approach is raising awareness. And that is what this book does. That is what uh, my office has partnered with uh, an organization called the ACE Resource Network to create a, a national public education campaign called numberstory.org, right? And it's really to help people begin to understand what is the story of your number? What does it mean in terms of your health and your well being? And most importantly, recognizing that, that the number of ACEs that you've experienced, it doesn't define you, right? You, you get to say how your story turns out. And it that does, is the. It, it doesn't define you, it does leave an imprint. And you need to be aware of what that imprint is. That's right. It, That's but right. It That's certainly right. does not define you. It certainly does not define you. You know, one of the things that I hear all the time, people ask me all the time, like, what's the difference between ACEs and trauma? It's all trauma is are, are all ACEs traumatic, all of these different things. And one of the things that we understand is that what you and Dr. Perry described so beautifully in what happened to you is the the, the impacts of trauma, how that can affect the a child's developing brain and body. One of the things I love about the ACE tool and part of the reason why the state of California is training all of our healthcare providers on how to screen for ACEs is because the, the 10 ACE categories that the CDC and Kaiser looked at are potentially traumatic, but because you've experienced ACEs, it does, it, there's no, it's not a guarantee. It's not determinative. But one of the things that is important is it identifies which of us may be at higher risk. And in that sense, identifying ACEs is about prevention. Because when we understand who may be at higher risk, what the science shows us is that when we do early identification and early intervention, we can actually prevent harms, right? And yes. that is what public health is all about. It's all about prevention. I think most people don't understand the correlation between having had adverse childhood experiences because people are like, yeah, that happened. I, I remember, you know, when I first started doing, doing the Oprah show, people were like, yeah, that happened to me, but so what? You know, so what? You right. need to move on in your life. That was, that was the way of thinking, particularly in the Af African-American culture. Like, you know, I'm not going to go see a shrink about it. I'm not going to talk to somebody about it. I'm going to go pray about it or I'm going to yes. keep it to myself. And that doesn't matter. I remember literally doing a show once uh, where there was a young black woman who's saying, yeah, my father came into the, pulled me from the choir one day and beat me in front of the church. But, you know, I'm fine. Nothing happened as a result of that. And I said, it's impossible to be pulled from the church choir and beaten in the church and not be severely humiliated and damaged by that. It's impossible. You just you you just haven't thought about it. You had to tell yourself that it was something else. And so I think the thing that you have done that is so significant is allowing people to see how ACEs define toxic stress later on. Can you speak to that for a bit? Yes, absolutely. So what we now understand is that when we experience adverse childhood experience, every time we have one of these experiences, especially if it's repeated or severe, it activates our biological stress response. Mm. And this is particularly critical for children because children's brains and bodies are just developing. 
And so our brains and bodies develop in response to our experiences. And so these adverse childhood experiences actually affect the way our brains and bodies develop. And it can lead to making our biological stress response more sensitive. So it's sensitized, but it can also uh, make it uh, overactive or have a prolonged activation of the biological stress response. And that is what uh, many doctors, especially in pediatrics, now refer to as the toxic stress response. It's that prolonged activation of the body stress response. It's that high levels of adrenaline or cortisol or all these different stress hormones that actually affects the way our brains and bodies function. Yes. And I don't think, I think, I think we've got to do a better job of helping people to understand that there is a biological stress response that really you, you're not even able to control because of this thing that happened to you so many years ago, you know? Yeah, that's right. And our, um, our, one of the things that's so important is to recognize that we have a biological stress response. It's like, you know, we have a heart, we have our cardiovascular system, we have lungs, we have a respiratory system, and we have a stress response system. And it can be uh, well-regulated and healthy, or it can become dysregulated. And if it's dysregulated, that increases our risk for physical, mental, and uh, behavioral health disorders. But the good news is that there are lots of things that we can do to help to regulate our biological stress response. And that's something that you and Dr. Perry talk about in What Happened to You. Well, you know, it's so fascinating to me that um, we took this approach, uh, the neurosequential model approach to our school and helping girls to understand the answer to that question of what happened to you uh, at my uh, school in South Africa, because we were having all kinds of, you know, when you have an average of six aces for every girl in the, in the classroom, you know, one of the main issues we had with girls in the beginning, and these are brilliant girls are so smart They, you know, 20 of them came to the United States and they're at schools ranging from Spelman to Brown to, you know, Stanford, brilliant girls who have had really terrible things uh, to happen to them. And, you know, in the beginning of, of teaching, the, the teachers realized that, you know, these girls were disassociating. They didn't have the term disassociation. They just thought, what hap what's happening to this kid? This is supposed to be a smart girl. She's in class and all of a sudden she's like not with us or daydreaming or off someplace. And so we realized that this was happening more and more and literally consulted with Dr. Perry about what we, we could be, begin to do. So I was the last time I was in South Africa was just before COVID. And we have taken this, you know, trauma-informed care approach to our school, and all the girls are aware of that question of what happened to you. And I was um, sitting in a classroom, and a girl asked me, um, "What do, what should I do when I'm trying to regulate myself, and someone is being dysregulated, and their their dysregulation is dysregulating me?" <laughs> so I thought, "Wow." We've gotten to the point where the language even is, is, is common in discussing how we begin to heal ourselves and begin to regulate ourselves. That's right, that's right. And uh, what happened to you, that, that is the question. And when I believe that knowledge is power, when we know better, we do better. And that is, uh, you know, why we put forward the, the numberstory.org campaign. Folks can go to numberstory.org to learn more about their own ACEs and get resources. But really, this is a paradigm shift that I believe is fu as fundamental as germ theory. It changes how we uh, treat disease, what we do in our schools, law enforcement, how we interact with our colleagues. And I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, Ms. Winfrey, for just putting your profound and powerful voice behind this issue. I agree, this is one of the most important issues of our generation. And uh, 
excited to be working alongside you in this important work. This is wonderful work that we're doing. Finally, you know, I think we get to the root of why people behave the way they do. Yeah. And that question, whether you are a professional or, you know, dealing with children every day, or if you're just somebody who, you know, is at work and you see somebody who is acting out, which as we know, people bring all their stuff to work. The, asking that question of what happened to you literally shifts the paradigm of empathy and understanding uh, from what's wrong with you, what's wrong with that person. And, and I just wanna reiterate what you said earlier. Our childhood does not need to define us. It doesn't mean that asking the question me and, and answering it now means you're gonna be defined by all the bad things that happened because I'm also a six, my number is a six. It means that you can take that and turn that pain into something very powerful for yourself when you begin to understand exactly what it is. That's right, that's right. Well, I think uh, with that, I, I'll just say thank you. Thank you so much. And um, looking forward to, to more to come, more conversations. Sure, more let's have more of these. I think this is fantastic. I yeah. love working with you. Just love oh, it. Thank you. I just love working with you. Thank you so much. It's such an honor. Thank you. For me too.